Welcome, welcome to the Raquel's Real Estate Show. Trying to make sense again of this crazy Arizona market, and I want to look at how bad is it out there. You're seeing a lot of doom and gloom. It's terrible. It's awful. Real estate agents only make money when real estate's going up. No, we make money on transactions. So when transactions are down, our business is down. Transactions are down about 40%. Uh, many agents are making at least 40% less than they did last year. You know, cry me a river, right? <laughs> but, but it is slow, and I'm going to show you it's slow. But I'm also going to show you kind of start by how did we get here and what are the numbers really looking at? So I'm going to show you real up-to-date numbers on median sales prices and inventory and volume in Arizona. You can make your own predictions on where we think we're headed. Um, everybody's usually wrong, me amongst them. So we're just going to talk about, first of all, how did we get here? This is the M2 money supply. You can see that when we were told to stay home for a couple of weeks and everything shut down, there was a lot of money injected into the system. And it continued and continued and continued. That's the amount of money that's floating around out there in our checkbooks, our savings accounts our mutual funds, you name it. And they're trying to pull this back, but it's not coming out of the system fast enough. If it comes out too fast, you've got real problems. And this is what you hear when people are talking about a soft landing. Is he able to do a soft landing? <clears throat> he thinks so. He being the Fed chairman, but he did make the statement, you know, um, we certainly would like to achieve that, but uh, we don't know. So that gave the market a bit of a jitter. And uh, interest rates went up again because they know he's going to stay there. And, uh, and this is what we're seeing on median annual sales prices in Arizona. Now, let's take a look a little bit on the detail because you can see this downturn that we had here. And I'm going to talk about that. But it's also gone up. So <clears throat> we had a peak here of 259000 back in May and June of 2006. And the wheels fell off the wagon. Look, we got down as low as 112. So that's, that was over 53% in Arizona. That was a huge drop. Now, come, we started climbing up, up, up. This is pretty normal. This is what real estate does everywhere. And then we hit a peak here, annual median, 450,000. And then we came down to 430,000. Nowhere near what you saw back here in the troubled times. What they call that? The Great Recession? But what's interesting now is we flattened out. Now, this is Q3 data through August. It's the most current data, up-to-date data that you can see on the annual median sales price. Now, where's it headed long-term? Well, that's what everybody's trying to guess and trying to know. A lot of people think we're going to get down to pre-pandemic levels, which are right here. So let's see what it takes to get there. If, if we were somehow to maintain this trend where real estate prices go up a certain percentage a year over time. There's no bumps, no wiggles or hiccups. Uh, it's probable that it'll put us right here, maybe. Maybe that's what they're trying to achieve. Don't know what that means to affordability. It certainly will help. Um, I don't know what that price indicates right there. It's not quite at 2019, and it's nowhere near this. You'll never see this again. Um, so that's, that's where we're at today. Now, if I look at uh, average sales price, it tells the same story. It's just a little bit of a bumpier chart. If you go to the Federal Reserve, it tells a different story because they're only crack, tracking all the way to quarter two. So quarter two showed the decline down, and it's not back up where it was. Now, why is it not showing this same huge dip back here in January, which is a question that was posed by one of my subscribers. That looks pretty bleak, doesn't it? Well, it looks like it was worse than here. But when I showed you the actual prices here in Arizona, you can see that there was a huge dip in prices here in 2008 versus now. But if you look at the national median sales price, it doesn't show that big of a dip. <clears throat> there were parts of the country that didn't get dinged that bad back in 2008. And there were parts like us in Vegas that just took a royal beating. So... Um, I'll wait and see what Q3 numbers come out. I don't know where they're going to come out nationally, but I think they're going to mirror Arizona where they flatten out or they came back up a little bit. And that's because if you look at the Freddie Mac house price index, it's just an index and it's showing an increase. So we had our little dip here and now it's going up. <clears throat> Same thing with this one, the Freddie Mac USA house pricing index year over year. Here's the big debacle in the 80s when we had interest rates at 18%. Here's what happened in 20. 2008, 2009, things got really bad. And this is where we are today. 
starting to inch back up. So that is the actual news about what's going on today. And then here's our volume. This is dollar volume. Now, this isn't number of units, dollar volume. So you can see that we had these peaks because home prices were high, sales were brisk, and now we're down to 21 million. And this is up through August. All of these numbers are through August. And so you can see this is where we're at. Now, if you erase those big years, the dollar volume has been going up just because the price of homes going up. So really, really shows you what an anomaly the past two years have been. But, you know, look, when money's free, I mean, why not? People are going out and getting those 2.75 interest rate loans. This is sales per month. I had already drawn some lines on here. And you can see where we're at. And this is where it's really sticky out there. Because right now, I mean, nationally, the real estate's $47 trillion dollars in value in the United States and we sell about four to five million homes per year and we have on average about two million homes available nationally well right now we're selling about four million loans homes a year slightly lower than four million but we only have one million homes available in inventory so that's what's keeping prices from dropping to the floors until that changes Look, it's no matter what you look at, it's supply and demand. Um, that won't get me on CNBC as a real estate expert, but that's where we are. <laughs> What's happening, though, is the volume is so low, <clears throat> you know, there's hardly any transactions that the industry's really kind of taking it in the chin right now because our sales are so low. We're selling 2,400 homes now every seven days, and uh, that makes it kind of kind of puny out there. I'll show you this chart right here. So. This is the number of contracts on a weekly basis, 2,468. This is the number of new listings. We had one tiny little increase here. We're still flat. So the gap between these two right now is still 70%. 70% of new listings are going under contract. That's a healthy market. If you're looking at selling, there's certainly no reason to panic. You can sell your home. Why did we see that big dip that came down earlier when I was looking at some of those... Uh, some of those numbers, well, part of it was simply because we had um, the iBuyers dumping things. So Open Door had 1,800 listings. They weren't having a fire sale. They had priced too high. And then when interest rates came up, they were already too high. They were paying way too much for these homes. And then they had to unload them. So they had to bring them down to the current market value. Well, when everybody does that at the same time, including some investors that panicked, House prices went down. They went down because our inventory jumped up to 19,000 homes. And today we're sitting at 13,000 homes. Cool. At the current trend, we could be at 19,000 homes by February if these two things happen. If the number of contracts remain the same, 2,400, and the number of new listings exceed contracts by about three to 400 per week, we will be at 19,000 homes by February. Now, <clears throat> there could be things dropped in the sky. There could be different reasons for inventory to spike up, go down. Sales could increase. All depends on rates. I'm just saying, if we stay exactly where we are today on the trend sheet, exactly there, we're, and add 400 new listings a week, which looks like that's what's happening, we can end up at 19,000. What happens then? We'll see price reductions. We'll see pricing coming down. We won't see a crash, and that's as far out as I'm going to go, folks, is February, just looking at trends. So I don't know what's, what's going to happen in the long term, nor does anybody else. And when I do and if I get it right, um, give me a thumbs up. Hope that helps. Take care. We will talk to you again probably tomorrow. Take care.